It is with great honor and with great admiration that I am so pleased to announce our next speaker. Mark and Marion founded Friend many, many, many years ago. But from the day they founded it, they have been pillars in the animal rights movement. And so Marion is no longer with us today. And so I'd like us all now to give her a round of applause, please. Before I welcome Mark to the stage, I'd like to say thank you, Mark, for everything you do protecting the animals, providing them a safe haven, for, uh, for allowing people to come and spend time with them, for allowing non-vegans to come and see animals for the truly amazing beings that they are. So please give a round of applause for Mark. Rescue, 25 years vegan this year. Um, yeah, thanks for the mention of uh, Marion. And uh, Marion started Friend uh, all them years ago. She used to sell flowers in the plant nursery. And the place she bought the flowers from had a livestock market, and Marion being mad on animals, she used to go and check in the welfare, and of course was very often appalled. And uh, one day she saw a little lamb in a, in a pen of her hands and he was clearly in distress. And she wanted to get him out, wanted to rescue him. And uh, the only way she could think of doing it was to ask the farmer if she could buy him. And he said yes. And she said, how much? And he said, a pound. So she bought the little lamb for a pound, took it home, and, uh, just couldn't quite believe she had him. He didn't live very long, but what a game changer. Yeah, she, she was just so enamoured by how sentient and intelligent this little lamb was. Um, she just couldn't quite believe it, really. And uh, so much so, she thought she was really the cleverest little lamb in the world. So I imagine her surprise when she went to the bank to say, Mark, you've got another one, and then she had the second most intelligent in the world. And um, yeah, that's how our friend was started. Uh, as, as in them years ago, well, we were supported by it, sort of some great single issue campaigns, you know, like, like they're still going today, like Sam's. Yeah, no, like uh, Speak and Shacks and, and all the rest of it. And when when that started, I knew then, uh, and I've been there 16 years, that the, the, the tide or the wave of compassion and empathy would, would run and it would become really an unstoppable tsunami. And look what we got here today. And this is where far we've come. And I want to really have a quick talk. of vegan sanctuaries in this like you know this unstoppable tsunami of compassion and for me what friend is and what other uh, like vegan rescues are they're hope they are light they are light of a world go on I try and grab it. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, anyway, I'll just carry on actually. Yeah, so. Uh, You know, and I'm saying that sanctuaries are right, they are the hope. And when people come to the sanctuary, as they're putting on the meetings especially, and uh, maybe this man could do with going to the sanctuary. Um, what people do, uh, the meetings especially, well, all, everybody, I'll start with the meetings first, what they do, they connect. And it's normally the children, and when the children come on site, they just run straight to the cows and the pigs and the chickens, and they jump on them, stroke them, and play with them, and belly rub, and pigs fall over. And nothing feels my heart more, I've got to share this really, than, um, than when the kids get back to their parents, and say, Mum, Dad, I don't want to eat chicken no more, I don't want to eat turkeys no more, I don't want to eat pigs no more. And that happens again and again and again. Sure. And, you know, when one of the speakers uh, before saying, you know, how people do this, 
because they haven't made a connection. If my knee is actually connected with the food on their plate, they'd all go vegan. And that's what it is, it's just a lack of, lack of connection. And for you activists, um, you know, just virtually all you, why is it important to, in my humble opinion, to support sanctuaries? It's, it's a place really to come and see happy animals, free animals, and it's a place to kind of honour them really. I mean, we've got a cow that's 21 years old, you know, and uh, she, 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 we got, we got 16 years old, and when, there, there's a majesty, and, and, and I think when, when an activist comes and like, you know, throws and say, gives a pig belly roll, you are actually rubbing the belly of all the pigs in the slaughterhouse, trucks, you know, all the ones are not so lucky every time you, yeah, you, 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 you knock out a barn or cows, it's the, the, you're giving the hay and straw to all the cows, you're not so lucky. And it's really important that, you know, as activists you kind of come and connect with them and, and know what you're fighting for. And I will just, um, I, I, yeah, I, I'll finish up, I won't, I won't say too much more, but it's, it's a personal thing of mine really. That, um, all these all you great people we use them. What you've done, I think, has changed things. Years ago, when, when you know, when friends started and a lot of the campaign groups started, I was talking about a tsunami. And I think what's, what's happened has been a change. And for all the brilliant, you know, the great uh, educators and the, 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 the supported campaign groups, and the regional animal rights uh, groups, what you've done is instead of being a voice for the voices, you now have given the animals a voice. And through like you know, the filming and modern technology and just getting out there, people are now are listening to animals, they can hear their screams, they can see their feet. And for that, I think that's why it's just growing and growing and growing. And for that I thank you.